Welcome back to the channel folks and to another painting tutorial. This episode we have got Hungarian infantry. You may have seen the Hungarian artillery that I painted in the last video. That was all about the guns and the bases. So please check the end screen if you want to see how I made the bases that you'll see these guys sitting on in the various still pictures that I'll, I'll show you. Now. I've started as usual with a, an undercoat of German camo black brown. I'm now using English uniform as the main colour for the uh, for the uniforms, uh, the trousers and the tunics. As always, I'm following the folds and the creases of the uniform, leaving shade, leaving that German camo black brown in the deepest areas. You don't want to leave too much. You just want to leave enough so that you've got the beginnings of the shape of the uniform and you're also going to leave a little bit around belts, bags and such likes. So get your one coat on, let it dry, come back after you've done a few more and then just uh, a wee bit of a touch up here and there where it needs a second coat. For the highlight here we're using Panzer Aces Old Wood and as always we're using the uh, insane detail brush from um, Army Painter. It's a very small brush, it's got a nice point, nice thin point on it and it'll give you a greater degree of control for getting these thin highlight lines on onto the, the figure. Now the highlight needs to go next to the shade. That could be on the edge of the tunic, it could be where the tunic meets the gaiters, it, it, but it also has to be on the, the folds. You don't want to be just putting a highlight on a high point, you want to be putting the highlight directly beside the shade to create that contrast and depth. You see it on the, the folds of the arm here. And if we're possible, always place the highlight above the shade. So if you imagine the light is coming down, hitting the highlight and disappearing into the shade in the folds of the fabric. For the gaiters, satchels, belt and other such fabric I'm using green grey. Now when you're painting these small areas you're typically just wanting to leave a little bit of internal shade around any distinctive features otherwise you're really just going to be painting the whole area with the base colour for that area. There on the scabbard for instance just leave a little tiny little shade around its outside edge so it's, it remains distinct from the background of the figure and you can do a little bit more on the bread bag there just because it's slightly larger but don't leave too much internal shade. A nice bright highlight for the green grey is Panzer Aces Splinter Camouflage Base or if you want to go a bit brighter you can use Deck Tan. Uh, I've actually used Deck Tan here just to try it out but it's, it's, it's maybe a little over bright and the splinter camo base is just a little bit more subtle. But work around the edges here, it's mainly outside edges you'll be hitting on such small objects. Use a dark brown for the ammo pouches. I think I'm using German camo medium brown here but you know leather brown anything dark will do and then a nice bright um, orange brown for highlight. Any areas that are going to be black or metallic, I am st starting by painting them all black, then using German grey I will paint the boots and then leaving black for a uh, shade there and then the same again for the metallic areas and in this case that's on the rifle. And then on the metallic areas only I'll use a tiny little bit of London grey just to give a bit of a metallic sheen but these areas should still be dark metal. For the rifle stock I'm first giving it a coat of flat earth. The main colour I'll be using is new wood. It takes two coats typically for that to give a, a good coverage over the dark base colour so I use flat earth just to introduce a little bit of depth, a little bit of shade um, and the rifle doesn't just look like one colour. I mean that's okay, I've done that in the past but as I'm putting on two coats it seems worthwhile just to uh, give it a little bit of a darker coat in the first instance. And then you see here we can pick out the details, 
leaving a little bit of shade around the, the, the hands, for instance, any straps that might be there. And this effectively forms a little bit of a highlight that isn't overly bright. For the rifle strap, I am using German Camel Beige, but anything similar would do, for instance, medium brown. That's a perfectly good um, substitute. Basically, getting that sort of raw, um, simple material that you see on rifle straps. And then for a highlight, something really bright, because it is a bright colour, we're going to use Dectan here. Off-white could be used, but Dectan is just a little bit more grey, but still nice and bright. Now for the helmet, I'm going to change the shade colour to US Olive Drab. You'll notice there's not a huge difference between it and the the, um, the dark brown, but it is something which looks a lot better with this kind of green that I'm going to use. And this is German Uniform Green. And I'm just going to paint the... I, I do like the Hungarian helmets. They kind of look like Frankenstein helmets with the bolts on the side. So I'm just going to work around when required, take your time and do two coats, uh, make it nice and even and smooth and just work around the whole helmet there with a little bit of shade, a line around that rim there using the uh, US Olive Drab. For a highlight, I'm using Green Grey. It's a very bright highlight, so don't go heavy on this folk. Just catch the edge there, catch those strange little bolts on the side of the helmet and then maybe just another couple of lines to give it just a bit of a sheen. For the hands, it's Saddle Brown. That's kind of my go-to colour. It's a, a shade colour. So you notice I'm just painting over all the, the skin areas. I'm not leaving any shade, any internal shade, for instance, between fingers. Likewise, when I'm painting the face, I may leave some shade on the eyes, but I'm really just thinking about getting this colour all over to replace the German Camo Black Brown as my shade colour. I'm using Game Colour Bronze Flesh Tone. When you're painting this guys, make sure the paint is right on your palette before you make a start. You don't want it flowing off. You don't want it going on sticky, as flesh pigments can do. You want nice sharp lines so you can pick out the fingers, the, the uh, backs of the hand, the palms if they're visible, and then work down the face, going down the centre line first, nose, lips, chin, go to the cheeks, and any ears if they're visible. You know, just the, all the things that we normally look for in faces. And then a final highlight with flat flesh, just very small amounts on the fingers, ends of the fingers, knuckles, the uh, the tops of the palms, on the, the points of the faces where light would hit, such as the nose, chin, cheekbones, under the eyes. And let's finish off by painting the chin strap. A nice, simple, leathery brown colour will do it. No need for a highlight. It's going to show up strongly against the skin tone. So that's us done, folks. I hope that's of use to you if you have a Hungarian project on the go or maybe it's going to inspire you to do a Hungarian project yourself. Check the um, artillery tutorial for how I made the bases you'll see on these screenshots coming up. Thanks for watching folks. Thanks to all the subscribers out there. And if you, you don't subscribe but uh, would like to, then you're more than welcome because that will help me build the channel and get this kind of content out to more people who enjoy Flames of War and painting miniatures.